East, south, and north, in neighborhoods, schools, and commercial districts, Holland Hospital and its urgent care, physician practices, education, and clinical services provide convenient access to award-winning treatment and life-enhancing wellness. Our bricks and mortar story began at the corner of 12th and Central, when the son of prominent Holland physician and drugstore owner, Albert Kramers, approached the Holland Common Council and offered to sell his father's home for $15,000, 5,000 of which he would donate back to the city. This home-turned hospital opened quietly in 1917. The upstairs became the nursery. On cold winter nights, babies were brought down to the kitchen to be kept warm alongside the nurses by an open-door oven. Confirmation that Holland needed its own hospital was evident as patients overflowed into overcrowded hallways. Twice, city residents were asked to support an expansion, and twice they refused, believing many non-residents would use services they didn't help fund. Then came an innovative solution. Profits from the Holland Board of Public Works would pay for a new facility. Construction began on seven acres purchased near the south edge of the city. On a bitter cold day in January 1928, six babies were transported by ambulance to the new hospital on the hill, which boasted three wards and 22 private rooms with a total of 48 beds. The hospital had an overwhelming uh, influx of patients who, for example, would have their baby delivered in the hospital because there was a lot of home deliveries before that. Uh, after they had a hospital that was a good facility and mothers would want to have their baby there at the hospital rather than at home. Even with the new expansion, it wasn't long before the wards were once again teeming with patients. Despite a staff shortage and financial strain, Holland City Hospital helped lead the United States in lowest rate of maternity deaths, thanks to the expertise of the nursing staff. Still, as the Second World War labored on, the problem of staffing lingered. Many Holland doctors and nurses volunteered for service, leaving Superintendent Boven to manage with a skeletal crew including Red Cross volunteers. Never afraid to roll up her sleeves, Nurse Boven often scrubbed the floors herself, earning the nickname, the original Dutch cleanser. Following World War II, hospital capacity was challenged once again. A facility built to accommodate 66 patients was forced to care for 82 people. Plus, the baby boom filled cradle after cradle. Visitors were asked not to park on the grass, and children were prohibited from visiting the hospital. Mothers and new babies had to be discharged after only four days to make room for new arrivals, far short of the normal two-week stay. In a silver lining story of overcapacity, 84-year-old Margaret Decker was roomed in the nursery after her surgery, only to greet the arrival of Janice Hill, her 60th grandchild. The design of a large expansion did eventually happen, but a post-war government restricted the materials and labor needed to bring the project to life. In 1951, only a portion of the expansion had been completed. Steel girders stood uncovered for another six years, a sad reminder of ambitious dreams. Fortunately, all hope wasn't lost. The federal Hill-Burton program would grant 
half of the $1 million needed for the building project if the hospital could fund the remaining cost. Up against a deadline, charismatic hospital director Frederick S. Byrd rallied support for a successful bond issue from voters in Holland, Fillmore, and Park Townships, and the fourth-story addition was completed in 1957. In 1969, 55 beds were added, along with a new emergency room, intensive care unit, pediatric play unit, and additional parking. Around this time, many current staff members decided healthcare wasn't simply their future job, but their calling. When I would go to visit, we would see the nurses and they were so kind and caring, and, um, and they took care of my dad and got him through a really, really rough time, and that's why I decided I wanted to be a nurse. It's uh, a good, caring profession with a lot of good, caring people. I think healthcare attracts that type of person, somebody that's got compassion, empathy for others. In the early days, nurses provided nearly all the daily care, resting only for a short time in a designated room. For Rena Boven and Mabel Miller before her, nursing was not a job. It was a way of life. As nurses became busier administering more complex drugs, intravenous solutions and treatments, they no longer had time to make rounds with every doctor who came into the nursing unit. Recruitment of new nurses became a priority. The co-op and pinky programs introduced high school students who were aspiring caregivers to the hospital and the profession of nursing. It made me. He said, I think you need to take that nursing entrance exam. I said, only if you make me. By golly, he made me. He stood in front of that door while I wrote the nursing exam, and I became a nurse. To this day, every Father's Day, I send him a thank you card because it was the best thing he's ever done for me. Caregiving is who I am. It's my passion. It's my soul. To one young man, the altruism of caring would permeate his life. Dale Cooper was four when his mother contracted polio. Polio was a highly contagious disease. My mom lived at Holland Hospital for the next two years, from 47 to 49. Condition had, had sufficiently stabilized that whether or not she would receive day-to-day -day care in a hospital or at home really made, didn't make a lot of difference. Uh, my mom came home then, and then she was in that Elks donated iron lung literally for, well, next three decades. When my mother would contract a cold, that was perilously dangerous. And then Dr. Uh, Dr. Winter said, Marjorie, I'd, I'd like you to, I, I, I really think we should take you to the hospital. To, the community there can care for you better than here at home. Boer's transfer uh, came with a semi, backed it up to our house at 47 East 19th. Yeah, they, they wheeled her off the semi. And it was just a whole, well, a community of nurses and doctors. And um, all the, well, the housekeeping personnel who greeted my mom, because they knew her. For, she had been there for two years. This was a community which responded to a family that lived in it. It was church, it was businesses, and in this case, it was the hospital community which, uh, which cared for one of, one of the people who had, who had been entrusted to their care. The essence of our commitment to caring is conveyed best through the unique words and perspectives of our patients and their families. Each and every day, we're privileged to serve those who live across a community we're also proud to call home. Together, 
we all are working to ensure a healthy, vibrant future. One of the more significant accomplishments in our 100-year legacy is our evolution from a city hospital to a healthcare organization to a healing network that contributes to the health and wellness of the community at many different levels. We sit down one-on-one -on -one with 150 senior level business leaders every year, and hands down, the healthcare system seems to be one of the highest ranked in terms of local amenities. And it's no, I think, surprise to us about that quality, but it also helps retain those businesses in the community. They expect a high quality healthcare system, and our system absolutely delivers on that. Healthcare employs directly or indirectly nearly 11,000 people in Ottawa County alone, contributing more than $500 million to the local economy each year. While many of these positions are visible, others remain behind the scenes. The students in this area are quite lucky to have a school nurse in the buildings. Um, Michigan is ranked very low in nurse to student ratio, and Holland Hospital has stepped up and thought that that was an important piece for the students in this community. To see happy, smiling, well faces, ready to learn, excited for school, and to be able to build relationships not only with the students but with their families and help them really um, jump some hurdles in accessing care is very important. Our school nurse program is just one community wellness initiative funded by the Hospital Fund Development Office. Established in the 1990s, this office also backs a number of other critical endeavors, including the Holland Community Health Center that provides treatment for individuals and families who are uninsured or underinsured. Staffing a nurse at the Holland Rescue Mission's family facility and Holland Hospital's Breast Care Fund, developed to cover breast health screening and diagnostic care for women in Ottawa County who cannot afford these services. You know, and I don't know, I, do you all have a good experience in the hospital? I mean, yes. here we come from Grand Rapids. So you go to Grand Rapids, you go to the... The, the butter, the spectrums and the Mercy Health and the metros and so on. And you come over to your Holland and you go, oh boy, what's this going to be like? Once again, once again, it was, you know, top notch. I didn't have to travel. Everything was able to be done right here. From the surgery, to the chemo, to the radiation, to the occupational therapy. Everything is right here in town for me. Today, average life expectancy is 79. A century ago, each of us could hope to live just 49 years. Contagious and infectious diseases were prevalent and often deadly. Community leaders fought hard for hospitals to care for the sick and the vulnerable. Yet many residents still took the train or interurban to larger hospitals in Grand Rapids, or even as far as Chicago for interventions like surgery. For many years, patients who needed specialized care simply had no choice but to travel to larger hospitals and cities outside of their community. Over the past 30 years, however, that mindset has changed. In fact, when it comes to medical care, we're now very much locally blessed. Holland Hospital has become a destination for specialized care, from orthopedics, spine care and women's health, to urology, obstetrics, cardiology, and neurology. Holland Hospital features services recognized among the best nationally, all supported by world-class technology, evidence-based practices, and a highly skilled and experienced medical staff. I think we've advanced and excelled in a lot of specialized treatment. The hospital had a vested interest in joint replacement surgery, building a new wing to the hospital, and really advancing the joint replacement program. It used to be with a hip and knee replacement surgery, uh, 14 days or 10 days experiences. Now you're overnight in the hospital, go home the next day, and now we're even pushing to, do we even need that? 
The Boven Birth Center shines as another example of excellence. From our compassionate expert providers to our state-of-the-art birthing unit and special care nursery, these are just some of the reasons why three out of four babies along West Michigan's lakeshore are born here. While Holland Hospital is no longer the hospital on the hill, one key part of our past endures. Exceptional quality our patients, families, and neighbors can count on. When I had finished working and I was trying to think, what should I, where should I volunteer? What would I like to do with my time? I just kept thinking about the hospital and wanting just to be a part of that caring community of the individuals who are here and in some little way, if I could help out with that, help the patients, um, help the staff. As a not-for-profit organization, Holland Hospital relies on volunteers to lend a hand in delivering an exceptional patient experience. Reliance on volunteers was especially critical during World War II, when Red Cross volunteer nurses joined the ranks of like-minded citizens to help keep the hospital running smoothly. They didn't have enough doctors, and so they'd have to have people who were interested in the field who would push uh, stretchers and uh, to push wheelchairs and do the routine stuff. In the 1950s, volunteerism became more structured. The hospital auxiliary, Margaret Hummer Guild, Rena Boven Guild, and many others set out to raise money for needed equipment, training, and supplies. From bridge marathons and horse shows to bake sales and Christmas cards, the activities began modestly, but earnestly. You would go to your friends and uh, ask them if they were interested in some Christmas cards that you could sell them. And that's what our group did to raise money. It was just things that we did to raise money to buy things for the hospital. Volunteers even took on the life-affirming role of helping new moms learn to care for their little ones. Over the course of the last 60 years, volunteers have staffed and managed the gift shop and coffee cove. They've raised money for materials and training for the community health center. They've provided much needed funding for spiritual care, medical care for infants with hearing loss, surgical guidance systems, our school nurse program, special wheelchairs, and more. Their generosity, talents, and time have been nothing short of exhaustive, totaling more than $1.5 million and thousands upon thousands of hours. You know, I was just so happy to be there. You felt like you were really doing something for, for the hospital and um, for the community. We are the last people that they see at the hospital, and I am aware of that. And I try to make my time with them as pleasant as can be. And uh, it's just an enjoyable place to volunteer. In 1946, the board created the new position of director and with accolades to Nurse Boven, hired Fred Colton from Blodgett Hospital to help bring greater administrative control over the growing facility. Under Colton, hospital expenditures more than doubled. Nursing staff grew from eight to over 20 and staff hours were reduced from 13 hour days to a more manageable 40 hour week. Colton oversaw the completion of the 50-foot post-war expansion, as well as the hospital's accreditation from the American College of Surgeons, predecessor to today's national healthcare accrediting organizations. Fred Bird came on board as director in 1949, and for the next 32 years, navigated through unfamiliar and often difficult waters as he struggled to keep pace with the rising demand for community health care. Bird presided over three expansions, 
including a successful bond issue that raised nearly $1 million in 1957. Chief among his hurdles, the economic impact created by Medicare-Medicaid passage in the mid-60s and medical liability insurance. The legacy of our next president, David Anderson, not only encompassed the development of pastoral care, but also the successful organizational change to private, not-for-profit status. His latter accomplishment was a forward-thinking but highly contested ballot item. Holland Hospital was an authority hospital. It was a governmental hospital. We could not, under the authority, we could not enter into relationships with other physicians. Uh, there were auxiliary things that we could not do, like form off-site campuses uh, that were owned by the hospital. So we went and sought a hospital conversion to a non-governmental, not-for-profit hospital. And uh, this brought a lot of consternation from a lot of the people in the community. Pharmacists were particularly concerned about that, that we, our hospital would farm, form a pharmacy and we'd be in competition. And we assured them that was never going to happen, couldn't happen, we could not be competitive. And we had many, many meetings, the League of Women Voters and other organizations that we sat with and tried to answer all of the concerns that the people had. But those are the sorts of things that we could do to make medical care better. And we felt more responsive to the patient and uh, uh, to give them what we could do here more locally rather than to refer patients out, out of the community. Judith Newham served as president and CEO from 1990 to 2002. A nurse by profession, she was promoted to the office from director of nursing. Many of her contributions remain prominent today, including the 1988 expansion, creation of the Lakeshore Area Radiation Oncology Center, and our school nurse program and the board's establishment of the $20 million Hospital Foundation Fund. Under Newham, the hospital implemented the Plain Tree Program, known only to a few progressive hospitals at the time. Representing a holistic, patient-centered approach to care, the Plain Tree model focuses on healing through nurturing mind, body, and spirit. We defined the culture around the patient, and that was a, a huge focus for Judy, that everything was centered around the patient. Everybody's job was related to the patient, no matter how foreign your job might feel. For the, for the guy in the boiler plant, who's physically far removed from patient care, it's, you know, you are creating again the, the climate for that patient to heal in, you know, temperature-wise, comfort-wise. So everybody's job was somehow related to being centered around the patient. I, I still to this day can remember the original building and in the brick facade and also remember when it was being torn down. You know, it's, it's interesting, the building and the facade changes, but, uh, you know, the community and all the nurses, staff, uh, those faces don't change a whole lot. Under the current leadership of President and CEO Dale Souders, Holland Hospital completed the largest expansion in its history, raising the bar on patient-centered care. In the past decade, the hospital has partnered with first-rate doctors to create Lakeshore Health Partners, the Bone and Joint Center, Western Michigan Urological Associates, and an outpatient surgery center. People across Ottawa and Allegan counties can now take full advantage of a broad range of medical specialties, including the exceptional Boven Birth Center, nationally recognized orthopedic and cardiovascular medicine, responsive emergency and urgent care, expert surgical services, comprehensive breast care, and more. Healthcare today is in an era where quality and excellence has to be demonstrated and not just talked about. 
We have management as close to the patient and the care that's being rendered on the floor as possible so that we can be responsive, we can be people-oriented, we can address the needs of patients and families with a variety of different cultural or personal preferences. We have to demonstrate we're meeting the patient's expectation and we're doing that and we're rewarding it in a way that emphasizes a personal touch, but in the most efficient and the most disciplined manner possible. Holland Hospital's commitment to staying at the forefront of healthcare is reflected in our new state-of-the-art heart and vascular catheterization unit, featuring short stays and same-day discharge, set to open in fall of 2017. In the next two years, you'll also see a newly expanded and enhanced Boven Birth Center, designed to give moms-to-be and their babies the highest level of comfort, attention, and care. Our continued pursuit of excellence has earned us accolades from some of America's top healthcare thinkers and evaluators. Today's Holland Hospital harnesses the power of teamwork, collaborating with Spectrum Health on the Spectrum Health Heart and Vascular Center, which is located on our main campus, as well as HealthPoint, opening in Grand Haven in 2018. No matter the changes or the challenges we face, our goal to set the standard for patient-centered care never wavers. Our mission remains to continually improve the health of the communities we serve in the spirit of hope, compassion, respect, and dignity. By partnering with you, our patients, and most valuable partner, Holland Hospital looks forward to a new century of caring and a healthier horizon for all.